I'm giving the call to the member for Menzies. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'm in the class of 2022, and I don't pretend to know the member for Dunkley, Peter Murphy, as well as those who have spoken before me. But one of the things about being in this place is that you get to work together on committees. And it's in committees that you really get to know someone. And I worked with Peter on two committees. One was the voice referendum committee where we didn't agree. And the other was on the social and legal committee for gambling reform where we did agree. And when you see someone in both of those circumstances, you really get to test and know each other uh, in ways that no other profession can or does. And I recall, I think it was the last week she was here, or maybe it was the week, two weeks before that, we had our inquiry that she was chairing into carers. And as always, I often arrived late to the committees and sat down next to her. And as she was doing her work diligently and professionally and focused on the task at hand, I saw blood pour from her nose, both nostrils. We all knew and you would just want to wrap your arms around her, but she didn't feel sorry for herself for a second. She just got some tissues, cleaned it off and got on with the questions. And that is her to a T. Um, she knew her body was breaking down, yet she turned up every day. And over there are some flowers that add colour to a place that often doesn't have much colour. But when she was there in person, she added colour to a place that often doesn't have much colour. Through her personality, through her conviction, and as I sat there and saw her with great resilience and care for others, not care less about what the physical act of her nose bleeding in front of everyone, I, I wanted to tell her how much she meant to me in the short space of time that I've known her, how much I've learned from her. And I learned from her when we disagreed on the voice committee and I learned from her when we agreed through her leadership of bringing us all together on an area of reform that is sorely needed and it's because of her that report stands. That's why it's called the Murphy Report. But I didn't have the courage to tell her that in person. I didn't feel it was appropriate and like many others have said I didn't think she would welcome it. So I went back to my office here and thought I could do my best in a Christmas card message that I sent to her. So when I saw the member for Gippsland do what he did in this place, in the most extraordinary way, we never get to tell people what we really think when they're here. We do it like this. So this morning I went, I saw him, I was in the gym, he was doing a swim. I caught him when he was in his speedos and I said, can you tell me how that happened? And he said, I knew she wouldn't like it, so I told her I was going to do it. And then she said, I wasn't sure if I'll come to even hear it. But she did, and he delivered it. And I think he did it on behalf of so many of us. And I think back to that meeting when I, those were the very words I wanted to say to her. And, and I'm glad that he did that in that way. When we, in the, as a class of 22, did our induction for being members, someone gave the quip that your first speech, be very careful writing it, because in many respects it's your obituary. And that really causes you to focus on what words you put on that paper. And the parliamentary library very quickly and beautifully puts together a biographical booklet on someone, and here's the one for Peter Jan Murphy, with her beautiful smiling face. And in it is her first speech, and some newspaper clippings, and other achievements that she has accomplished. And so many members have referred to her first speech, the Pippi Longstocking quote, how she was proud of being from a public school in Wagga, 
and the final reference that many give, which is that when she says, I would like to be able to say that I left Australian politics, Australian democracy in better shape than when I joined it. And she certainly did. She certainly did. She also said in her first speech that this, this parliament is the cauldron of Australia's national conversation. And we are not just participants in it, we're custodians. And custodians know something that others don't. You know that you don't own it. You know that it's going to end. And for Peter, she knew that her time here was shorter than most and it was going to end. So she made sure that every day counted and that she made a difference. She also noted that ideas should be contested and sometimes fiercely, and I saw her do that in her passion and commitment to the wording of the voice referendum. But she also said we should separate that contest of ideas from attacking each other personally, for recognising the dignity and the work that we each have to do. And the Attorney General quite rightly noted a moment in a campaign that she ran earlier where some from my party in a social media post criticised her for the clients that she represented as a barrister. We should never do that. It's called the cab rank rule. You're supposed to represent everyone you can with your best efforts. And that's a very noble thing. It's a very noble thing to do because our system requires people like Peter with passion and conviction to do their very best, knowing that in the end, a judge or a jury will be the final decision makers. I didn't know her as well as others, but she left a mark on me and I will be forever grateful to her. My sincere condolences to Rod, her sisters, her parents. You're quite right. We shouldn't, parents shouldn't bury their own children and to her colleagues in the Labor Party. She is a member of your family and you all mourn and we mourn with you. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you.